Today is June 29th. Welcome on into Daily Cards Live here on ClavesOnline.com. I'm Joe Roderick, joined by Matt Rocchio in for Bob Ramsey today. And you're going to be seeing a lot of Rocchio throughout the uh, <laughs> month of July for both me and Raymer. So might as well kick him off here on uh, today's show where the Cardinals go for a sweep against the Miami Marlins coming back yesterday after being down three game or three to nothing in the uh, the middle of the game end up winning the game five to three and rock that's something the Cardinals have not done uh, that well uh, this year coming from behind to uh, to take away victories when they score first they've been amazing but uh, when they when they don't it's been a bit of a struggle is that directly related to the struggles of the bullpen those got to be connected in some way shape or form right I, I don't know because, I mean, when you have, you know, everybody in the bullpen has their role and you have the guys in the bullpen that are there to hold leads. And those are the guys that have been giving the runs up lately. I don't know how that correlates with that or if it's just, you know, the way the the approaches at the plate where guys are, you know, when they're being pitched to with a lead, if they're just not as aggressive as they would be uh, sitting uh, sitting ahead. But regardless of the fact, they get the win in, uh, in the game yesterday. And tonight, they will face uh, Sandy Alcantara in the finale of the three-game set. A, a guy that possibly will be the starting pitcher at the All-Star game for the National League if, uh, if things line up that way, as he has just been outstanding this season for the uh, for the Marlins. Yeah, he's been incredible. He's been dominant. I mean, there's been a couple of games, I think two times against the Mets where he's just completely shoved, you know, shoved like nine, ten strikeouts. I mean, he's been absolutely dominant. He's been great um, really against uh, Goldschmidt and Arenado in their career. That kind of makes me a little bit worried uh, going into this game. When, when Goldschmidt and Arenado have bad games, the Cardinals offense seems to kind of stay silent around them. And so the fact that we're coming in and they're three and 22 combined in their careers against Alcantara, that's a little worrisome because he's been so dominant. You know, gone is the Sandy Alcantara that was in the Cardinal system who was who had a just ridiculous walk rate. He's pulled that down. He's kept the velocity. He's increased his control. And we see what it's getting him, sub two ERA, sub one whip in, in a seven and three record, even with the Marlins. So the Cardinals will uh, will go with this lineup tonight against Alcantara. They send Andre Pallante to the mound for yet another start. And, hey, we'll have more on the uh, rotation here in just a second. Brendan Donovan leads off and plays second base tonight, giving Tommy Edmond the, uh, the day off. Dylan Carlson is in center field. Paul Goldschmidt at first. Nolan Arenado at third. Juan Yepes in left. Lars Newbar in right. Connor Capel with his first major league start, dh and Edmundo Sosa back at short for a, another game after a very good game yesterday. And Andrew Kisner back behind the plate for the Cardinals. For the Marlins, it's John Birdie at second, Garrett Cooper at first, Jorge Soler in left, Jesus Aguilar is dh Jesus Sanchez in center, Avisail Garcia in right, Brian Anderson at third, Miguel Rojas at short, and Jacob Stallings is behind the plate. Prior to the game tonight, the Cardinal or the Marlins have put Jazz Chisholm on the 10-day injured list with uh, those back spasms that he has been dealing with. So uh, no Jazz Chisholm tonight or for the next week or 10 days for the, uh, for the Marlins as he tries to get healthy. Cardinals caught a little bit of a break this series, not having to, uh, to face Chisholm for as good as he's been playing. Uh, with only the start yesterday and getting removed in the uh, the middle of the game. A few news and notes for the Cardinals, by the way, um, this coming out of the locker room from today and for the pregame talk with Ali Marmol. A few new faces are in the or a few familiar faces, I should say, in the locker room for the Cardinals today. TJ McFarland back after testing positive for COVID. He missed a couple games. They are going to keep him off the main roster, but have him throw a few bullpens before they decide whether or not to bring him back. And Matthew Libator has joined the team, is not active, will be activated uh, probably on Saturday for the game against the Phillies as um, they, they need some starting help. They need somebody to fill that rotation for Jack Flaherty. So it'll be Matthew Libertor. Interesting, though, it's not going to be a spot start. They are going to look okay. at what Libertor does, and they are going to decide if they need to keep him up here on the team. I, you know, Rammer and I have been talking a lot lately, Rock, as I'm sure you guys have been in the morning on uh, on 101 about the Cardinal and their starting pitching needs. Yeah. I still think they need to go figure out somebody to trade for, somebody to bring in to have that extra arm. 
but it sure would be nice if Matthew Lewitour stepped up and took one of those spots in the rotation. It'd certainly be helpful. Um, and it would take some pressure off, off Mo, Mo and company, but I think today's a great day to talk about this topic because it's an Andre Pallante start. And I think that's a perfect example because if you can get another starter in, you can move Pallante back into, in, into the bullpen. And now the questions about guys like Drew Verhagen and TJ McFarland become much more minimized and, and the role that they have to step up in the, and the improvements they have to make kind of become a little bit more null. And so that, that's the biggest part. And, and I think, you know, leaning on a guy, who hasn't gone deeper than you know five you know five even for you know in his first four or his first three of his or his first four starts I should say he hasn't gone deeper than five leaning on that's you know that's it, it would kind of be a stereotypical you know move to get angry about with the Cardinals but in, in the next two or three weeks I think we're going to see that they just have to make a move because guys like Palante even if they do succeed have to get moved back so you can start stretching things out and and, and not you know essentially putting yourself in a bad position for August or, you know, for October by moves you're making in July. And I think we've seen that in past Cardinal seasons and they got to avoid that this year. Yeah. I think if anything, it's just to have those other arms there to pick up innings where needed. I, I, I think, you know, I still think there are a few guys on the 40 man roster that will not be on the 40 man roster and not because of trades, but just because they're, they're going to realize they're not, necessary to the team's success in yeah. in October and I think you still see that right now and last night you know you, you're you we're talking about Matthew Libertor having to step up and earn himself a spot I, I think right now Andre Palante has earned himself a spot on this team for the rest of the year will that be a starter the rest of the year or will they move him to the bullpen and change his role at some point we'll, we'll see what moves they make Jordan Hicks is close to coming back and could very well be back with the team this weekend. We could see a lot of roster moves made this weekend with Libertor and Hicks and Mats also on their way back. I know they want Mats to throw again this weekend and maybe one more bullpen before he's activated again before the uh, before the, the Philly series next week. So that the more arms are coming, but you still want to see what's out there. But Junior Fernandez last night might have been one of those games where you look at it and you say, okay, this is, you know what, this is a guy that just might have earned another high leverage spot. We're we're going to keep going with him. We're going to keep seeing what he can do. Is that another arm that Marmol can trust in the late innings? Yeah, we actually, we did talk about that this morning because it, it kind of shocked me. I went to go check, you know, Fernandez's game logs and I was like, oh, I'm like, this guy hasn't allowed a hit, a hit yet. It's not just it's not just six and a third scoreless innings. It's six and a third hitless innings um, for him since he since he's come back up. So he he's been fantastic over this stretch. And so yeah, that's a big thing. You know, you get two innings like that from him. That is a huge relief, especially in a game like Dakota Hudson, where he was more efficient, but still obviously isn't going as deep as you would have liked. So yeah, that was a huge outing for him. And then obviously just the consistency of Giovanni Gallegos and Ryan Helsley can't overlook that. I don't know if you were watching or listening uh, which broadcast you were following last night, but I was I was listening on my on my way home last night to the uh, to the call on Camel X, and they were talking at one point about how Fernandez was working so fast, how he was getting the ball and he was going, getting the ball and he was going, calling it. I mean, a quick pitch, but talking to Klaibs earlier today, he was saying, you know what, it probably really wasn't a quick pitch. What it is is Fernandez has gotten used to the minor league way. Oh, the minor yeah. leagues okay. have the pitch clock right now. They are practicing. They are trying out the pitch clock down in the minor leagues. So a guy like Junior Fernandez has had to get used to get the ball and throw, where so many of these Cardinal relievers, like a Gallegos, who is the slowest pitcher in – not 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 exaggerating here. No. There are numbers to back it up. Giovanni Gallegos is the slowest working pitcher in all of Major League Baseball. And a guy like Fernandez was just getting it and going toward Laz Diaz, the home plate umpire at some point, was like, okay, hold up, kid. You know, let's let's take a breath and – let you know, let, let's maybe slow it down just a tad to where that's another element that you have to kind of look at in the future that all these pitchers have to get used to this pitch clock. So do the umpires at, at the major league level that they might not be getting used to this. But it was, you know what? Hey, it's nice when those guys get it and throw it. And I think it's going to come to a point where the umpires aren't going to mind if it's moving that fast. Well, Joe, you know who gets really used to uh, those kind of quick changes really quickly? Robots. 
<laughs> that's 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 how you do it. It's like, oh, how do we make this transfer? Robot umpires. That's how we do it. Uh, you see, well, Joe West is retired now, so I can, I guess, I can vouch for uh, for robot umpires in the uh, in the future for that. Uh, hey, Connor Capel makes his first major league start today. I think the world learned last night that uh, that he has a pretty uh, pretty famous godfather. That being the Rocket Roger Clemens. I, I know I had a uh, I, had, I had somebody send me a picture of him with a guy wearing a Batman shirt and sunglasses, and I was like, who? Who the hell is that? Like, I looked at it and looked at him like, who who is this supposed to be? And he goes back, it's Clemens. And I was like, okay, I still didn't see it from the picture. But then once you saw all of the other pictures that and the videos that made their way online without the sunglasses, it was, oh, yeah, that is uh, that is Roger Clemens. But a pretty cool story that not only Capel getting the call up and he's getting the start tonight, but also Roger Clemens' son, Cody, who's in the, with the Tigers, hit his first Major League home run this past weekend. So the two guys grew up together. They're making their Major League debuts very close together. And hopefully Connor can match his uh, his buddy Cody here uh, very soon. Yeah, good for him. An incredible story. And obviously, you know, anytime you, you can get the rocket just randomly kind of waltzing into Bush Stadium, that's got to be kind of a, a of a cool situation. Well, while we're talking about Capel, something we didn't mention when we were pointing out the lineup, something, I think some people might be wondering why Capel at the DH instead of in the outfield where Yepes is for left field. Obviously, the overall outfield shakeups coming from the Harrison Bader plantar fasciitis injury. So explain a little bit of, of what we learned in the pregame about the Capel Yepes kind of difference there. I think in, uh, Ali Marmol said that they looked at it and they thought that it would be a lot easier if a lefty comes into the game to face Capel to quickly just put Albert up there and not have to worry about any of the defensive changes that you have because you could always get Yepes out of there late in the game if you need to defensively and put Donovan, move him from second base out there. And uh, right now, Gorman's dealing with a little bit of a hand issue from a uh, from a ball that he took off the hand on Monday. So uh, it was padded up this uh, this afternoon in the clubhouse. So they are, they, you know, maybe they're a man down tonight. Maybe if in an emergency, they could use him if needed. But, you know, Yepes has, has more than shown that he's capable in the outfield. I'm sure Connor Capel is a, a much better defensive outfielder, but you also get, you know, the, the third level, the third tier of Bush Stadium that Capel has had, what, two days of taking fly balls to with the sun and everything where it yeah. is right now during uh during start times where Yepes is used to it at this point. So I think you might actually be a little more comfortable with him and, and take a risk with uh, with him out there in hopes that, you know, nothing bites you too bad. See, old school haters, there still is strategy with the DH. How about that? <laughs> hey, this has been another edition of Daily Cards Live here on Claves Online, brought to you each and every day by Munganass St. Louis Acura and Royal Banks of Missouri. And, hey, if you go to stlouisacura.com, you can look at all of the cars that they have in stock right now. And you can make an appointment to go there at 13720 Manchester Road in St. Louis to check things out right there on their showroom. And also see why Munganass St. Louis Acura is the nation's only 30-time Acura Precision Team winner in the uh, in the nation. And go say hi to our boy uh, Clayton Patterson out there at Munganess St. Louis Acura. We will be back tomorrow. It's an off day for the uh, for the Cardinals as they make their way out uh, east to take on the Phillies. So we'll kind of look at the roster and recap the three games against the Marlins on tomorrow's show. For Matt Rocchio, I am Joe Roderick. We will talk to you tomorrow right here on Daily Cards Live, presented by Munganess St. Louis Acura and Royal Banks of Missouri right here on ClavesOnline.com. From our roots in St. Louis, Royal Banks of Missouri is branching out to continue serving you with our locations in St. Charles, Jerseyville, Granite City, and now in Hannibal, Center, and New London. Royal Banks of Missouri, the community bank in your community.